there is one hadith that is very fascinating and it is an authentic hadith. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, al jinnu thalatha. Jinns are of three types. One type, lahum ajniha. Yatiruna fil hawa. One type, they have wings and they fly and they roam around in the air. They are flying around in the skies. They're living their lives and they're going by. The other type, they are hayat. There is a category of jinn that typically appears in the form of animals. And two animals in particular the jinns love to appear in. But sometimes there are other animals. And the two main animals that the jinns love to appear in are snakes and dogs. But this does not mean that they never appear in another form. They could have other forms as well. The third type of jinn is they come and they go. This is the one that seems to want to irritate us, want to frighten us, want to come into our lives. This third category. Again, there is a lot of discussion about this hadith. And there are some things that we can say very definitively. First of all, the question comes, are these three types the only three types of jinn? Some of the scholars say that the Quran and the Sunnah mention more than these. So these are an example of three types of jinn. But what I want you to take from this hadith, notice how there are three different types that the Prophet ﷺ talks about. And notice how the three have different characteristics and different abilities. So notice one flies through the air. The implication is that one flies through the air and the other one doesn't fly through the air. Some of them are good and some of them are bad. The good jinns are called jinns and the bad jinns are called shayateen. The jinn are all different. They have different abilities, different characteristics. They do different things. They like different things. They dislike different things. And there are different categories of shayateen. There's a shaitan. Al Marid and there's the Afrit. As there's criminals, let us say, some of them are oppressors, some of them are transgressors, some of, some of them are disbelievers. Also, the Shayateen, there are ranks depending on their disbelief, depending on their power. And every one of every type of them have different ability and different strength. Just like you, my dear brothers and sisters. Some of you can lift 20 kilos and some of you can lift 200 kilos. Some of you are intelligent and some of you are not as intelligent. So the jinns are like this. And Abu Dawood narrated from Jabir ibn Abdullah that the Prophet ﷺ said, if you hear the barking of a dog or the braying of a donkey, then seek refuge with Allah for they see that which you do not see. So the Prophet ﷺ indicated that both donkeys and dogs are able to see the jinn in certain circumstances, Allah knows best. There are certain jinns that are there just for evil. Their nature is evil. So one of the ones that Rasulullah has told us to be aware of are the ones that like to stay with impurity. They are known as the khubus wal khabaith. Now they love toilets because they just got this impure nature. Their, their, their name is khubus wal khabaith. You know, they're a particular impure part of the jinn sort of colony. And Rasulullah has told us that when you go to the toilet, you just have to seek protection before you go in the toilet. So those jinns, if they're there, they won't have any effect. There's others that like to stay with the human beings because they are impure or they are stay in an, in an unclean manner. Now only impure jinns will stay with impure people if they're of that kind. And they will just stay with them. Sometimes they won't affect them. There's one particular shaitan that will give doubts. So when people have make wudu, some people get doubt. Did I wash this? Did I, did I, did, no, let me wash it again. So they wash it again. And then after that, they, did I wash that little part of my elbow? No, let me wash it again. So they wash it again. This is doubt. This is doubt. And if you see any person who's in that, the best way is to get somebody who looks over them and tells them, just listen to me. Yes, you washed it. Now you just carry on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the jinn say, some of us are righteous and some of us are not. And many of us have different ways and different ideologies and different thinking. Some of them, the jinns are Muslims. Some of them are disbelievers. Some of them are Jews, Christians, Buddhists, atheists, monks, everything. 
the same as human beings. Many people mistakenly think that all of the shayateen are ta- chained up in Ramadan. This is not true. Only the marada of the shayateen. And the marada of the shayateen are the obstinate or the, 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 the ones that are especially going to harm you. Are they a separate category like the ifrit? Or are they simply the shayateen that are more harmful than other shayateen? Allah knows best. Because the ifrit seems to be like a, a different species of the jinn or a different clan of the jinn. And Allah knows best. The disbelievers from amongst the jinn, they have a very ugly appearance. They don't have a very nice appearance. And we don't know a full appearance of them. I've met many patients who describe the jinn to me. Um, I've met many people who have seen the jinn in various different forms. But I'm going to only quote you what Allah Azza wa Jal tells us about the jinn in their appearance or about the evil beings from amongst the jinn. Allah Azza wa Jal tells us about the tree that grows from the base of the hellfire, the tree of Zakul. The tree which is Ta'amun Athim, which is a very painful and an evil tree. And Allah describes the fruit of the tree of the hellfire and says it looks like the heads of devils. So if you imagine this horrible tree, this horrible poisonous evil tree, and you imagine that it looks like the heads of the shaitan, you can imagine that these shayateen are not particularly nice in appearance.